Welcome to the British International Sports Medicine Academy. In this lesson, we're covering the Level 3 unit, Anatomy and Physiology for Exercise. Core and Posture. Let's review our session aims. We'll begin by describing the structure and function of the stabilizing muscles and ligaments of the spine. We'll go on to describe the local muscle changes that can take place due to insufficient stabilization. We'll explain the potential problems that can occur as a result of postural deviations. And lastly, we'll explain the impact of core stabilization exercises. Posture is defined as the arrangement of body parts in a state of balance. Proper posture is important because it provides a solid foundation for all movement to take place. It allows for biomechanical efficiency. It allows for balance between the right and left and the front and back of the body. When we have proper alignment within the body, we're less at risk of injuring ourselves. And it also reduces the risk of degeneration of our muscles and joints. Static posture. Static posture is alignment of all of our body parts when the body is still. Dynamic posture is alignment when the body is moving, such as during exercise. It's important to always teach an exercise stationary first so that your client has a chance to perfect the technique. For example, if you were going through a lunge, first you would teach them a stationary lunge before moving on to walking or alternating lunges. Because when you add movement to an exercise, it increases its complexity. Because you then have to maintain your posture dynamically. Core stability is defined as no unwanted movement from the body center. When we move our limbs, force is applied to the body center. At this point, we can see destabilizing or unwanted movement within the body center. However, if our core was working effectively, then we would not see any unwanted movement within the core. So a strong core makes our movement patterns more efficient overall. A neutral spine is the position of the spine whereby impact and forces are absorbed and transferred most effectively. Meaning when our four natural curves are in proper alignment, the cervical, the thoracic, the lumbar, and the sacral or coccygeal curves. The stabilizing muscles and ligaments within our core. Let's review the local or deep muscles. Starting with the transverse abdominis, which provides anterior support to our core. The multifidus provides posterior support and the quadratus lumborum supports the lumbar spine. The internal obliques provide lateral support. Our pelvic floor muscles provide inferior support, and our diaphragm provides superior support. Let's also look at the global or superficial muscles, including our rectus abdominis, our external obliques, and our erector spinae group, including iliocostalis muscles, the longissimus muscles, and the spinalis. We also have ligaments that assist with spinal stability such as our posterior longitudinal ligament and our anterior longitudinal ligament that flow down the anterior side and the posterior side of our spine. The posterior longitudinal ligament helps prevent excessive forward flexion, whilst the anterior longitudinal ligament helps prevent hyperextension of the spine. The thoracolumbar fascia is a sheet of connective tissue that covers our lumbar spine and our sacroiliac joint. Several of our muscles connect to the thoracolumbar fascia, such as our transverse abdominis, our internal obliques, our external obliques, our latissimus dorsi, and our gluteus maximus. It's the balance pull of these muscles on our thoracolumbar fascia that provides another element of support to our lumbar spine and core. When our local and global muscles are tensed or activated, they can increase our intra-abdominal pressure along with regulated breathing to also offer stability to our spine. 
Before strengthening the muscles within the core, you must first assess that your client has proper posture. The aim is to first teach them how to maintain a neutral spine and then you can begin with exercise prescription. When choosing exercises, make sure to choose exercises that focus on the local as well as the global muscles. Examples of good exercises for the core are the plank and core exercises using the stability ball or BOSU ball because these will challenge both the local and global muscles. We can achieve core stability passively, actively and through neural control. The passive system covers the proper arrangement and alignment of the spinal column and this is supported by the spinal ligaments, the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments, as well as the thoracolumbar fascia. The active system is through engagement of both the local and global muscles. Feedback from our proprioceptors, namely the Golgi tendon organs and our muscle spindles, help us to prevent injury through proper sequencing of muscle contraction. So the feedback from these proprioceptors lets the body know when to contract or relax a muscle at any one time so that core stability can be achieved. Postural deviations such as hyperkyphosis, hyperlordosis, and scoliosis also affect core stability and proper posture. One of the aims as a personal trainer is to correct muscular imbalances within the body that can lead to postural deviations and it also will help your client achieve a neutral spine. When you have a stable core, it prevents unwanted movement in this area. So you will therefore have a decreased risk of injury. There will be improved application of force upon impact. There'll be improved appearance as well because you'll have an upright posture. You'll have improved balance and motor skills. You'll have reduced lower back pain, improved lung efficiency because many of our core muscles assist with breathing. And within the elderly population, they'll also be at a decreased risk of falling. When your core is unstable, you'll see inefficient load distribution within the body, which can lead to joint pain. There'll be a lack of balance, and you will be inefficient when performing motor skills. There'll also be thoracic or shallow breathing because you won't be using all of the core muscles to assist. You'll have an increased risk of injury, as well as an increased risk of developing lower back pain due to weak core muscles, which can lead to excessive pressure being applied to the intervertebral disc. The elderly will be more at risk of falls with a weaker core, and certain complex exercises will be too difficult due to poor posture and a lack of mobility. Take a moment and review our session aims. Are there any areas that are still unclear? If so, please go back and re-listen to that part of the lesson. Thank you for listening.